Tonight, we have gathered, this is a first for the Actors Refuge Roundtable. We've talked to industry professionals, movers and shakers, like people in positions of authority and power. Tonight is our first Actron. He's a, he is, he is a man for all times. He is uh, a man of, uh, uh, of some renown stage and screen. You might know him from um, Father of the Bride. Uh, you might remember him from uh, Groundhog Day. Uh, you might remember him from Strangers with Candy. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I, I did a the, little bit. Most of these people have weren't born for that. Yeah, no, that's true, that's true. Um, no, star stage and screen, he is a Chicago native. And so I wanna talk to him about craft. I wanna talk about like, just talk about shit. Uh, this is a trivia. Um, the last person I had dinner with indoors before the pandy hit oh. David Pesquese. But ladies and gentlemen, let's just give it up for David Pesquese, okay? Thank let's you. do Thanks. a show of hands. Good work, everybody. Proud yeah. of you. There he is. Have you ever done shows for the hearing impaired? That's where I got it from. Yeah, that's where that's how from. they applaud. In, in elementary school, we, we were made to do that. Very progressive school. Bingo. In Texas, no less. I'm sorry, I was led to believe this was gonna be far more formal. Um, yeah, I, I apologize. Yeah, I'm wearing, a, I'm wearing my uniform from the early 90s, which is t-shirt, uh, cargo shorts, and a pair of Vans. So um, you, uh, you honor me with your uh, fancy attire, sir. Thank you. So I know you grew up in Chicago. You are a native of Chicago. Okay. I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. West or South? North. North, okay. North, North, okay. Um, the so bits over. You. The bits over, right? The, that, yeah. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fine. Get, get, get comfortable. That's fine. <laughs> that was so, just for you all. I was led to believe this was going to be a form, a more formal. I was just for you. Did fucking I, did deliver, I, man. Did I? I don't. Maybe it's the maybe it's the title, the Actors Refuge Roundtable. It does. It does have that, what, Algonquin mm -hmm. round table thing. Yes, I, I completely understand. And my apologies, I should have. I should, oh, Katie Page says, you did good. Hey. Thanks. All right, good, good work. Um, so did you grow up, okay, so did you grow up in an artistic family? Like, did you no, grow up? No, no, nope, not at all, no one. We had, my, my father was first generation uh, Italian American and, um, Everyone was in the trades. There was a few professionals, but not a single person was involved with entertainment. So if I wanted to go into any other job, there was something I could ask advice of, not this one. Yeah. It was, and also it wasn't even uh, an option. It was not an, it, I'd never considered it to be a possibility. It just so was never, it was just the, not so did you so when you graduated high school did you go did you go to college for what yeah i went to college for uh alcohol that's why I, <laughs> that's originally why i went and then they uh then they threw me out and then i worked construction and i figured out oh this is this is why, this is why you go to school um, and i had great i was working with these uh italian immigrants and I, one of the guys that I was working with said, well, what would you want to do? And I'm like, I guess I want to, also, you know, if I didn't, if I didn't, I'd try comedy. He goes, well, you got to try, otherwise you'll always wonder. And even then, so I mean, clearly that stuck. I still remember it today. Um, but even then it wasn't, never thought it would be an, an option. Yeah. So, I mean, so, so I was studying for, for just to, I was going to end up going to some other graduate school. That was just what my brothers did. Um, and that was what I imagined I was going to do. So, I mean, like from your earliest, like as a kid, was there, was comedy something that you always gravitated to or? Yeah, I always liked it. Yeah, absolutely. I always liked it. I'd never performed. I'd never been on a stage till I was almost out of college. Oh, and wow. I happened to, I just went to an uh, improvisation class with my brother, my older brother, who was in law school. And where, where was that? It was the Players Workshop of the Second City, which was at the time, like the only school improvisation, you know, uh, structured school, I think, in the country. Um, yeah. But for sure in Chicago, Second City didn't have one. 
Um, nobody, Sharna wasn't around, the IO that wasn't around yet. And um, so, and then my first teacher was this woman, Judy Morgan, who happened to have been in one of those amazing casts at Second City. It was uh, uh, Judy Morgan and Eugenie Ross Lemming and Brian Doyle Murray, Joe Flaherty, yeah. uh, John Belushi. So were you, Ramis. were you coming into improv like at the tail end of like what those guys like, you know, like National Lampoon Radio and like uh, all of that? National Lampoon late radio. Well, no, that had happened. It was late 60s. Little, yeah, that, well, 70s, I think. And that, that happened before us. And um, second or Saturday Night Live was on the air. Um, it was still, you know, the the original gang, I believe. So mm -hmm. this would have been, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the original gang. Uh, but that had a big impact on me. Um, I really loved watching it. And again, I never thought of anything more than that. It was really fun to watch. So when did you, when did you land at Second City? And what was that process like? So I started the, these workshops with my brother. My, he was going to law school. My mother insisted I accompany him. I was probably uh, 18 something like mm. that. And I was going to Loyola now. I'd gotten back into school. I was going to Loyola and uh, studying philosophy, still not interested. And, and I tagged along with him and I ended up really enjoying improvisation from the very beginning. And uh, then I continued on with that. And then w while I was going to school and I did that for, I guess it took about eight months to get through all their classes. And then that was that. And then the next semester I went abroad and I went to school in, in Rome and my roommate over there just happened to be Joel Murray. We met mm -hmm. um, and his brothers are Brian Doyle Murray, who I mentioned, and Bill Murray. And, so, um, wait, you, so you didn't know Joel before going to Italy? No, no, we met over, we met on the plane on the way over. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, we were over there and we were joking around about, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go be comedians still never having done anything toward that end yeah and it turns so, out so we got back right. i ended up uh, finishing school uh quitting uh, getting a job in commercial real estate getting fired working for a friend lit, sleeping on his floor starting to do stand-up and joel gets a call from his brother that says um hey this del close guy is teaching these workshops del close was their director at second city both brian and bill and he's this kind of legend within improvisation in Chicago theater also he was a great actor, um, but also within the theater community. And he was starting these workshops where he thought he could make long form improvisation, the evening's entertainment. Up until that point, long form improvisation was a thing you do in rehearsals to develop material that will be sketches. Mm -hmm. And Second City was a sketch theater company. And that was the only paying job in town. And a lot of everyone in Chicago said they belonged to an improv group, but they didn't. They belonged to sketch groups. Right. Um, and so, uh, so we ended up at Dell's workshops. So and what? So what year was that? Around what? What time frame were we looking at? Maybe 1984. Does that sound? Does anybody call me out on that? Uh, something like that. <laughs> you're the expert. All right. That's why you're here. <laughs> um, uh, these were a lot of those years are a blur. Difficult <laughs> to recall everything clearly. Sure, um, sure, sure. For a lot of reasons, um, but it was a long time ago being the first one. Um, but so then we ended up with this workshop, and we didn't know what was happening. But he was developing the Herald at that time, which is, for those of you who don't know, this this long form improvisation that's kind of ubiquitous uh, around the globe now. Yeah. Um, and at that time, there were forty people on the planet that knew what it was and, and none of us had ever seen one. So out of that, so so did Dell do that at Second City and then- No, that was his own Char place. That was no, his, that own, was his place. own place with Sharna. And, with Sharna, okay. Yeah, and she, the two of them did it together and it, there was no levels like most places you have now, you just went to Dell's class. Right. And you went to Dell's class forever. So you got a the job that took you away. Right, exactly. <laughs> So this is the thing, I, my, my original idea when I thought about inviting you was I wanted to actually, because I know Lisa Zambetti, I wanted to uh, have you and Joe Mantegna on. By virtue of the fact that you both played Ricky Roma, 
at various times, right? And for me, like, like he represents kind of being a part of the halcyon days of Chicago theater. Like when all of those guys, I mean, when, you th when I think about Chicago theater and all of those guys that came out of that energy in the mid late seventies, it's staggering to me. I mean, cause it's not like LA and New York, it's Chicago. It is its own entity, right? And I feel like, and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, um, but I feel like you were part of the halcyon days. I mean, I know the compass, you know, like was the earliest kind of form of, of improv that, that begat Second City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. And, and the, you know- the, Nobody the, here is gonna fight you. No, okay. But you know what I mean, but like, um, but like what you're talking about, like, you know, with, with kind of Dell making the noise that he did, I.O. coming on the scene, yeah, kind of Second right. City, you know, like you were a part of that really burgeoning community and we see it now, like the fruits of that. Yeah, and, and we all just happened to be there when Dell was doing this thing. It's not like we did that. Those other people you mentioned, they started theater companies. Right. They participate. We just, I, I didn't do that. I just happened to be there when Dell was coming up with this. Thing. And so, okay, so doing that so how long were you involved in those in those classes in that uh, in that couple, training couple couple three years um but then del and i stayed uh we did other stuff together the two of us we ended up being in plays together and did a show ourselves just the two of us we did our own show so um, let me ask you there's okay, so i i i told i told dave before uh i let everybody in that i did zero research really because uh, i just wanted to have a conversation the one thing that i did the one thing that <laughs> I did a lot of research. I fucking put on a vest and a tie. A, a I would have done a sport coat, but they're all packed. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I did go back and watch. Uh, if any of you guys, and I talk about this in in the intensive. I talk about this in in the workshops that I do. Uh, trust us, this is all made up. Um, if you want an entertaining, an entertaining DVD to watch and you'll find something new every time, get it. You can get it on Amazon, that's where I got it. Um, and I went back and I, and, I, and I watched it again and I, there's, the inter, there's an interview portion kind of before the, the show, um, before the show goes on, right? Um, where TJ said, TJ, TJ Jagodowski, who, and we'll talk about that in a bit more about that. But he says that when you guys came together, you had kind of taken about 10 years off of doing like regular improv I, I, consistently is yes, what he says, I, right? Yeah, and then right. it was a bit of a coup to kind of like have you come back in a kind of consistent fashion. I guess, here's my question. When did you transition from strictly comedy improv into theater? Because that was my first exposure to you was when I first moved to Chicago the first time and my buddy was the TD for Northlight. I told you this. And Dave was the PA. He was the production assistant for Nussbaum. And you were doing the old neighborhood there. And I remember closing night, we we're on the back dock and you were like cracking jokes and like everybody was falling out. Like everybody was dying. And that was my first exposure to you. And then it was like later on, it was like, oh, look, it's that guy. He was in this, you know what I mean? Like, like an asshole. So when did it when did it when did it stop being just about improv and comedy and how did how did you adapt your process for that? Because uh, it's very different. The first play I did was a Chicago Conspiracy Trial at the Remains Theater, um, and some of you uh, out in Los Remains. Angeles was, was uh, the Odyssey is the it was their production and Frank Condon directed it in fact, um, and the Remains Theater was this fantastic place with. Uh, it's one remains and Steppenwolf. They came up around the same time and organic with Montaigne. Um, they all, that was part of that scene. And it was this fantastic theater. Um, and I just got the job. A guy named Larry Sloan was the artistic director over there who was this amazing human being. And uh, it was a weird thing in Chicago at that time that like we were the, I was working at Second City and then we weren't really considered for acting jobs you know, theater jobs. So it was this, uh, and rightfully so. Because <laughs> um, most of us had zero training in 
legitimate theater. I, a prime example, zero days in class for theater. Um, and they brought us in, they brought, brought a few of us in for auditions anyway. And I ended up getting that job. So that was my first play. And I really enjoyed it. And it's, uh, it was weird, you know, it was, I'm used to work in a second city where you come up with your own material. And so if you say it differently, it's yours. You can say it however the fuck you want. It's eight shows a week and right. you know, there's no such thing as line notes. Uh, not, not true at the Remains Theater. Um, <laughs> and, and I remember my first, the first preview, Puff, uh, the stage manager handed me a stack of line notes. <laughs> it's like, what are these? What are these? Oh, that's all the shit you got wrong. Um, wow, I was pretty close. Yeah. Close doesn't mean shit. Learn your fucking lines, Pasquazy. Okay. All right. That was. <laughs> I didn't. I just didn't know. I mean, so that's how unfamiliar with theater I was. And then I really enjoyed that. And that's a whole. You know, it's a different set of skills, and it's a different. You get. I get different things out of it. I enjoy different things about it. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then I try. I started getting more jobs. But actually, so, the next one was that place, the old neighborhood. Oh, really? Yeah. And Nussbaum hired me because he said, because, uh, you know, the, the job is you just walk around and everybody else does shit. Right. Uh, in that particular, it's these three sh little, these three scenes that make a play. And um, he's like, I, in the audition, I like the way you listened. It's amazing. And, that's why I got the job. And that comes directly from improvisation where that's basically the only thing you do. You just pay attention, which, so I think it's really helpful for all. For all and that. I, that's actually, that's the thing I, practice paying attention was a line that jumped, up, jumped out at me. Something you said in the, in the DVD. It's just that, that, that mo the moments are the you know the afternoon before the show when you guys were together and then separate right like looking at the environment just kind of like taking shit in and it's just practicing paying attention and i and i feel like i wish actors did that more right like the, to kind of create a rolodex of behavior to kind of just absorb the world around them so that when something comes up it's like oh it's this right? It's this gesture or whatever. You know what I mean? I think that's the thing that, that improvisers, I think, have on kind of more traditionally trained actors, right? You have to focus on the other person entirely, right? Yeah, or you're because, doomed. right. Because they have all the information you need. Um, so whereas if in, in a play, I, can, I don't really have to pay attention to you because <laughs> I know what you're going to say and I know what I'm going to say in response. So right. I don't really have to. I mean, I don't believe that. I had to be pretty boring, um, but a lot of people believe that. <laughs> I've been on stage with them, like yeah, like uh, just I'll check I'll check back in when I have to talk. Um, <laughs> We've had this conversation before, and I a little bit, and I want to have more in depth. Why isn't Chicago more of a hub in the same way that Atlanta has become? Oh, Atlanta is because of tax. That's it. It's financial specifically. So they give them 35, I think it's 35% cash back. Holy cow. Including salary. A lot of other states don't do that, but that, at least they were. I don't know what it is anymore, but I was down there for a couple of years and it was, it's kind of almost ridiculous. I think it's 35%, 32%, something like that, but cash back, including salary. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. And so Chicago, like, I mean, I know that they're obviously with the with the Chicago shows, the, all the shows that begin with the word Chicago. Okay, okay, so that's an interesting thing. So all those shows, no Chicagoans, right? At least, well, there are now. There are regulars on the shows that are Chicagoans, but at the beginning, they were not regulars. Any series regular, according to people like that guy you mentioned, and a lot of people, if you live in Chicago, you are not a quality of a quality that would be a series regular and there's yeah. that prejudice is real well and i but i think absurd that that's, or not I've but i think that's also not. i think that's also true in regional theater too 
You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like the Goodman. I, I remember here going to New York and, and then like uh, Goodman, Steppenwolf, uh, North Lights. Like, uh, uh, yeah, you, you like doing regional theater? Regional theater? I don't think. Of, okay, I guess that's regional theater to you. What is your process like when you get, because you don't have like a traditional kind of like acting background, you know, where, I mean, what is, what is it for you? What is the thing that you, what's that process that you go through with a character? Um, I try to get all the jobs. <laughs> and that's how I, that's how I vet material. I, I try to get uh, every job I go in on. Um, I don't get uh, hardly any of them. Um, so that's, I mean, but the ones I, 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 I uh, being somewhat facetious, not entirely. Um, mm -hmm. Like I've been really lucky. The people who have hired me, they just happen to hire me for things that I think are really good. Um, the people that, that are doing the things that aren't as of a quality that those things were, they just don't hire me. Um, mm -hmm. So it's working out great. Um, but in terms of the, but what I'm talking about is like that, that process with character. Like, what is that for you? Like the, the, like the preparation, like, I guess the homework part of it. I, yeah, I, really, I, I, um, I read it and I think how, like whatever, depending upon what the job is, if it's, you know, I just think how would I like to see this done? And that's the way I did it for voiceover, for commercials too. How would I like this to be, how would I like to hear this on the television? That would be the least offensive way to have <laughs> someone sell me soap, you know? Um, and, uh, and it's kind of the same thing for TV and film for me and, and plays. Like how, how, well, for plays, it's a little different because there's uh, so much information within the, you know, there's, there's, it's finite. There's a lot of it and that's all there is. Yeah. Um, so you can get everything out of the play. Um, I can get all the information I need, exactly what's going to happen. Um, but well, like on TV shows, it's a little different because even though like anymore, it's like they're fucking, you know, making bombs or something. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, give a script out. What the fuck? You get like a page that most of that's redacted. <laughs> like, what are you, you like? What the fuck? You're making a, you're making a little fucking TV show. Get over yourselves, anyway. Right. And you've got just uh, the the two small pages, right? Yeah, right. So I don't really know what all I and they're not gonna, you know, I don't know. I really don't know what else besides these two pages. So that's kind of a crapshoot. But when you get the material, you're like, oh, I can understand. I can understand what this character's function is. Like sometimes. Uh, I'll, for a while, a lot of the jobs I get are kind of exposition guy, you know, because mm -hmm. um, that's that's the job. I understand that's the function here. It's not like to be the romantic lead. It's the guy to fucking move the story along, throw some facts out. Um, <laughs> that's and I get it. Like and um, sometimes the jobs are different. Like sometimes it's kind of like I'm doing something now. I understand. I am comic relief in a fucking space thing. Um, it's a blast. Um, and so it, that's like the larger picture. What is this, what is the function? What is my function within the larger picture? Then it goes down to character. How, how is the best way to deliver that either material job or joke? Do you have any, do you have any thoughts that you would like to share about Mammoth either yeah. as a writer or as a practitioner? I really like doing that material. That's a job that I love doing. Um, no, no, I, if, uh, I, I will stand by this. No one's done one of those plays correctly. I mean, a performance where everyone has said every single word in the right cadence and said with two dots instead of three, you know, um, and, and I, no one, no, and that's a, a real challenge. It's really fun. And if you're with a bunch of people that are trying to do that, um, it's a blast. Um, I also like that he talks about, I use what he said about acting for improvisation. And there's this little 
thing that he said is the interchange between two people on stage is always occurring, is always unplanned, and is always fascinating. Mm -hmm. And he goes on then to uh, just <laughs> eviscerate acting schools. But oh, I no. stopped there. I stopped there at those three things. Yeah. And about improvisation, I don't have that. Uh, I, I don't have to do as much as I think I do. It's already fascinating. One thing that I've I've started to embrace about about acting is the kind of mysticism that's gotten lost in the modern thinking. We've become so practiced and rehearsed about what acting is. And the thing I love, and I don't know, I mean, maybe you're just saying it for the camera. I don't fucking know, but that's what I'm gonna ask you. Like the the feeling of, like both of you, both you and TJ in the in the DVD say it, we have faith in it that no matter what you know what i mean like like it's going on like the story is going on and we just kind of like jump into an hour and then we jump out and it continues yeah and i uh that's not just we actually believe that and it's easier that way too it's more fun that way it's like an adventure who i don't fucking know what's going to happen let's go find out Let's yeah. find out what's already going on. And I think it's the same thing in plays too. If you get a bunch of people together, like let's just do this thing it's to, for tonight with all that we're bringing into it tonight. And yeah, I know we're gonna say all these words and we're gonna be standing in those places, but um, let's leave room for whatever the fuck's gonna happen. Um, Robert asked, do you like auditioning? Did you always? Many don't. I tend to consider those people weaklings. Wow. I wish I, I, I sometimes do. I don't always, um, I didn't used to at, like it at all. I, because I thought I should just get the job. Um, and I honestly believe that you should just give me the job. Don't, uh, I do. I, it depends on for whom. Sometimes I really look forward to auditioning for different uh, casting directors like uh, Gail, for instance, or Bonnie, mm -hmm. or uh, Debbie, or Allison Jones. Um, I really enjoy those people. And then there's uh, casting directors here in Chicago that are just fucking great. Um, sometimes it's uh, degrading. You know, it just is. Um, and then it's like, okay, um, I'm going to I'm going to get going. <laughs> um, uh, but also, you know, there's some, something about like, yeah, I, I like doing this. Some, I like doing the material. I'll do it for them. I, it's yeah. like uh, they're the only people that I'm going to get to do this for. Um, so if I have that mindset, it's a lot more enjoyable for everybody. But if I, one of my problems is if they keep me waiting for like, uh, I think I have an alarm clock that goes off in my brain in about 30 minutes. And I get up, I leave because I'm gonna be a fucking jag off. That's all that's gonna happen. <laughs> right. Um, and so I'm just wasting everybody's time. So, um, and I know that sometimes things happen and stuff like that, but uh, I should just, I should just leave. Was there ever a moment where something clicked for you where it was just like, for lack of a better, for lack of a better phrase, like, I gotta get this job to like, eh. I'm just gonna go in and do my job and then I gotta go, I'm gonna have coffee with Fred. Was there ever a moment like of, just kind of like where it turned for you or? Where... Well, yeah, I don't know if it was a moment, but like, yeah, it didn't used to be this way. I don't know when it exactly happened, but like, I wanna go do this well. And uh, I wanna go impress these fuckers. Um, and that's not the same as I gotta get this job. Yeah. Um, I wanna go make it hard for them to say no. And there's a, here's one thing. There's a guy, Peter Jason is this older actor who's fucking fantastic. And if you look him up, you've seen him in everything. And um, he has some great advice about auditioning. And he said, you know, I go in and I, I'm prepared and I do, do a good job, but there's 10 other guys in the waiting room that are going to do this really well. I'm also showing them that I'm a guy they want to spend two weeks with. So I had there, and that I think is the main thing that Zoom prevents. 
Yeah. Um, or it makes it a lot harder to show any kind of personality whatsoever. I mean, even in the hello, hey, how you doing? Yeah, nice. The, your body language when you walk in a room, everything, they, they're able to see anything, not on Zoom. Is that it? Is that all we got? That's all I got. Um, so again, Mr. Pesquese, always a pleasure. Sir, good work. Let's give him a hand. Thanks. Let's give him a hand. Fun. Good work. You guys can unmute yourselves if you want to just say goodbye. And then I'm going to kick all of you guys out of here. Oh, wait. Can I not do that? Oh, yeah. There we go. Look at the Look at all the praise raining down upon Ooh, you. It's like very nice. Thank you thank so you much. much. Thank you so much. Everybody, everybody loves Piss Crazy. All right. Thank talk you, soon, thank buddy. You. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. See y'all next yeah. month, okay? Bye. Okay. See you, man. All right, bud. Good seeing you. Talk soon. Thanks.